let's get started. Cool. Yep. Uh, one person on the so, so let's see. Today we have Graham Jordan. You work with Professor Lighty. Yes. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give a presentation on deni design and creation of dynamic telemetry displays for the Georgia Tech Mission Operations Center. So with yes. that, as I said, um, take your time because you're the only one today. Cool. Oh, okay. cool. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So like Dr. Irvine said, I'm Graham Jordan, and so. Uh, my topic is on the design and creation of dynamic telemetry displays for the Georgia Tech Mission Operations Center. Um, so what the Georgia Tech Mission Operations Center is, so it's a project that's been spearheaded by the Space Systems Design Lab, or SSDL, to have a centralized location for tra both transmitting and receiving to Georgia Tech operated satellites. Um, so we were also, uh, it's we're headed by the SSDL, but then we're also partnering with the GT Amateur Radio Club uh, because and the Georgia Tech Ground Station Network so that we can actually communicate with the satellites through radio transmission. So this project was meant to be a hub for uh, satellites, both uh, built by Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech Labs, uh, especially in the SSDL, as well as those uh, by other institutions who have partnered with us for uh, Georgia Tech to do the operation side of things. So, for example, we have the GT1 satellite, which was also built under Dr. Lightsey's lab, and then the Target satellite as well, I think, I believe, built by Dr. Gunter's lab. So, those are currently being worked on uh, and are currently being operated by the Georgia Tech uh, Mission, Mission Operations Center, the GT MOC. And then we also have some future satellites coming up where we are planning to do operations as well, such as the Lunar Flashlight mission, which is a JPL mission, who we, uh, they reach out to us to do the propulsion system. And then we also put in a bid for doing the operation side of things. So we are also going to be operating the Lunar Flashlight, which is a CubeSat that's going to be orbiting the moon uh, from ESM 301. So it's very exciting. That uh, is going to be launched hopefully within the next year. And so that'll be exciting to actually do operations on something orbiting the moon. So here's just a quick little data flow diagram for how uh, the for the intention of the Mission Operations Center. So we have our satellites in orbit either uh, either around Earth uh, or I guess in the lunar flashlight case the moon, and then they transmit to the ground stations. So at Georgia Tech we have a few different ground station locations. The ones we've been focusing on primarily so far have been the one uh, at the top here, which is uh, at the Mon on top of Montgomery Knight. And then we also have a ground station on top of Van Leer. And in the case of uh, Lunar Flashlight, we're actually communicating with the DSN, the Deep Space Network, uh, who's going to, uh, we're, we have scheduled contacts and then they're going to uh, send the data to the, the GT mock. So then all of the data is going to flow through the ground stations um, and then this is a very simplified diagram. There's going to be a lot of decoding and radio stuff that happens in between these arrows, but all of it is going to ultimately uh, be sent to the, to the mission operations center so that we have a centralized location for our operations to take place instead of having to track down everywhere where the telemetry happens to be. And uh, actually, instead of actually doing this at the ground station ourselves, we can have a central facility where we can house all of our operations and commanding uh, the things that we want to do. So one uh, integral part of the Mission Operations Center is creating displays to showcase all of our telemetry. So this is very important because if we want to present our telemetry and actually analyze it, we have to have an efficient and clean way to actually view it. So uh, that's why these display interfaces were created. So we have some example uh, display interfaces, as you can see on the right. I'll be going into much more detail on this throughout the rest of the presentation. But these basically show different spacecraft telemetry as well as upcoming past data. And uh, we have several examples. Uh, so some of the example telemetry we are very interested in showing are like the satellite locations. So this includes ground track data, as well as upcoming past times. So when they're going to be overhead. And that's very important because uh, that's the only time we can actually communicate with our satellites is when they are passing above us. So it is important to know when those passes are occurring so that we can know when we're going to be receiving telemetry. Um, and also health 
for the for the satellites, such as battery health, uh, power, how much voltage is charged on the battery, temperatures of different components, such as the solar panels or really any other components that we have that utilities are available for, as well as overall status updates uh, to make sure that all of our satellites are operating okay and there aren't any problems. So these display interfaces are very important for both quickly and easily observing the spacecraft status. So I'm gonna go through a brief timeline of our process for developing these displays from initial creation to where we are today. So uh, our phase one, I like to call it, was starting in around spring or really fall 2019 to fall 2020. And so, so these steps, uh, so like I mentioned before, our mission operations center is in ESM 301. And that room used to be a storage room with that was completely unused and really had, did not have much of a purpose aside from storage. It, it's literally an attic up in ESM. And so we have been over the course of a few years transforming it into a fully functional operation center. So because of the, the origins of that room, we needed to start from scratch. So we first referenced other operation centers to get a reference for what they were doing so that we could have a good idea of what we should be doing since none of us had ever really done anything relating to mission operations before. So then we brainstormed telemetry ideas for what we actually wanted to display because it, it was really important to know what would actually be useful to showcase um, in, in the operations center and what would be useful to the people who built the satellite as well as the operators so that they could quickly know what they would need to do based on the telemetry that was coming in. So then uh, once we had an idea, a general idea for what telemetry would be coming in, or uh, at least our idea of what telemetry would be coming in, we drew out different sketches for potential layouts on how to most effectively convey all of this data. And so we basically wanted to answer the question of what did we want the data to look like? And then we, uh, after we had potential layout ideas, we researched different types of software to see what would provide, a, provide us the capability of actually displaying the telemetry in the way that we wanted to. So we had to find some way to actually present it that uh, was available and easy to use for us that uh, we could effectively show what we wanted to show. So the final product of phase one is we ended up uh, going with the software of MATLAB App Designer as well as SDK in order uh, for our initial concept for displays. So MATLAB App Designer is very cool. You can make uh, several different apps with whatever you want. It is very customizable, very user-friendly, runs completely on MATLAB, which as aerospace engineering undergrads, that is what most of us were already very familiar with. So it allowed us to add our own MATLAB scripts and uh, customize it even further. So we initially made three different apps that are shown on the right side of the screen here. So we have a sky map display that basically shows when the satellites are going to, or where the satellites are going to be when they're passing overhead. Uh, so these basically show like the azimuth and elevation angles that the ground stations would need to follow in order to actually track it. And then we also have a pass update table. This table shows us when the next few passes of satellites that we're interested in are going to occur. And then we also have ground station tracking on the bottom right, which this one, uh, the goal is to model, uh, there's a website called NASA Eyes where NASA can show you which of its DSN antennas are currently being used. So the idea was to kind of base it off of that where we have the Georgia Tech ground stations and we can see which antenna is currently being used to track different satellites. And so then we also uh, used SDK both to obtain this data to see when the, uh, both to propagate it to see when satellites would be passing overhead, as well as to visualize where the satellites were. So we had a few previous Georgia Tech satellites that we weren't really receiving any telemetry from, but we were still able to track them. Um, so we modeled that in, SD, in this SDK scenario where we could see them around the globe, as well as the ground tracks of where they would be. So all of these we were able to display on a large television screen in four different panels. So this model was a really good starting point and we were able to do very quick work on it. 
but it also had many limitations to it that we needed to move on from. So for example, all of the data was obtained through SDK, which, um, so that, that's good because we wanted to know where the satellite was going to be. However, we hadn't really, we didn't know at all what exactly the data we would be getting from, for example, GT1 would be. Like we hadn't really talked to anybody who was actually working on GT1 to see what like the format that their telemetry would come in, what exactly, what exact data points we would be getting um, and things along that nature. So that, that was an important thing that would uh, be worked on in the next few semesters. And then also all of the apps were very separated, like each one had its own individual task and they had to be manually opened and closed if we wanted to add even more apps. So there was a lot of manual clicking just to get everything running which wasn't ideal since we want everything to be going completely automatically. And then also uh, no connection had been established yet with the ground stations, which goes back to the telemetry from the from GT1 where we need to actually have a path from for that uh, data to get from the satellite to the ground station to the mission operations center. So this leads us into phase two which uh, includes several major Im improvements to the display apps. The first one, as I previously mentioned, we actually were able to reach out to the GT1 software team, and they were able to help us along with figuring out what format the data we would be getting from GT1 would be in. So this gave us exactly what type of telemetry we would be getting and the exact format. So because of uh, we received the format, we were also able to create a decoder that decoded the data from its raw form into a form that we could actually use in MATLAB and that could be read by MATLAB, which all of our displays were in. And so uh, the top diag diagram here actually shows uh, a sample of the dictionary that, of the telemetry. It basically shows what the data actually is, the variable name uh, in the software, um, and then the type and component. And so this was very important because now that we knew what exactly we were going to be getting, we could make new graphics relating to this specific telemetry. So on the right, on the bottom right, we have a sample from one of our display panels where we have uh, a lot of data that was basically generated as fake data in a telemetry generator, but all of it was in the exact format that we knew we were going to be getting. So for example, we have magnetometer data on the magnetometer that would be on GT1, as well as battery data, such as voltage and current. And then we have temperatures of several components and then system flags if any uh, errors would occur. And so we also condensed all of our graphics into three apps instead of the the many that would take if we were just doing one graphic per app so we had three different what we call display modes uh for the operations phases where we had a pre-pass a during pass and a post pass app the pre-pass would be they're very self-explanatory the pre-pass is uh would run before the pass so that would show when the next pass was coming uh what what when we were expecting to start receiving data as well as some previous historical data from previous passes. And then we would also have a during pass app that would run as the pass was occurring, and then it would update the telemetry in real time to show the data as it was coming in. And then we would finally have a post pass app that would process and analyze all of the data that we just received from the previous pass. And then we also had a MATLAB script that would automatically cycle through all of these apps that could, in, in theory, run automatically forever. So there were many uh, benefits to having all of these features. Uh, for example, as I mentioned before, MATLAB App Designer, very user-friendly, has many customizable features, as well as the entire system being in MATLAB was very helpful to uh, us undergrads who had no prior coding experience. So that was also a very good uh, starter, uh, a very good start to designing our displays. However, it also, uh, this phase also had many shortcomings to it as well. So with all of the telemetry items that we were trying to display, App Designer would often be very slow to update. 
and would sometimes often crash the entire system. So it was very, very buggy. And we also had a system of nested timers in MATLAB because instead of having a web interface uh, update our time automatically, we had to update everything ourselves completely manually. And so this added uh, an entire layer of complexity and it made things almost impossible to debug. It, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, and so then also MATLAB, it's not the most flexible language, even though it has a lot of customizable features to it, there, it still has its limitations. Then also we were initially planning to use, we have a shared drive in the SSDL where we were planning to upload all of our telemetry and because that's where our display apps were. However, that was taking a very long time to actually transfer telemetry from one computer onto the shared drive onto the next computer. And so that wouldn't be super realistic if we wanted to see our telemetry almost immediately. We also still had not yet made an actual connection to the ground station, to the operation center. And also we were relying on SDK, which even though we have a license for at Georgia Tech, it's still not ideal to, uh, to continue using that because it, it is also one of the things that was making these apps run very slowly. So we were looking to find potential better solution that, than that. So now I'm gonna move on to some of the current work that we've been doing uh, in the past one and a half semesters, really. So we've been uh, moving away from the MATLAB SDK interfaces, which have been very helpful, but we, we want something that's more robust and also more flexible, light, and efficient. So we, we've been looking towards open source solutions such as OpenMCT, and so OpenMCT is a web-based software that NASA provides that allows for custom mission control interfaces design. It's very useful. It's entirely in JavaScript. So um, it allows, it has a very easy interface for adding and taking away different plugins. So you can really have whatever types of displays uh, are available freely over the internet. And you can even write your own plugins for if there's a display type that is not provided that you would like to include. So uh, also we have several Python scripts running along with it, which is also uh, much more flexible than MATLAB. And so OpenMCT we're planning to use to downlink, so obtain the telemetry from our, our ground stations and showcase wh what that data is going uh, looks like in these OpenMCT interfaces. So they're very much uh, modeled after the previous MATLAB displays that we have going, but we want to we want to adapt them so that we can have even more flexibility with what we can with what we can show, as well as uh, due to this being web based, it's easy to transport. Uh, it's easy to showcase on any computer that is connected to the telemetry server. So uh, this allows for much more portability. And so this top right diagram is uh, a sample. It's one of, from one of the tutorials on OpenMCT on what a sample display would look like. So as you can see, it's very clean, very polished, uh, and still gets across what we would like to, to showcase. And so then another software we've been looking into is Grafana or Satnogs. So Satnogs is actually a, an online database that has uh, telemetry from many, many different satellites, and it's run by uh, amateur radio operators who are located around the world. So they just do this as a hobby most of the time where they track different satellites. Oh, oh yep, yep. Uh, they track different satellites and they uh, receive the telemetry on their own computers and then upload it to this online database for anybody to see. So using this, uh, we also similarly have a customizable layout that we similarly modeled after our MATLAB version of the displays. And so these were have actually been in use to track GT1 data. So this bottom screen is actually a screenshot of GT1 data that is being recorded by amateur radio operators all around the world. So this was extremely helpful when GT1 deployed because instead of having to wait for several hours after the um, after GT1 was deployed from the ISS to uh, you go to our ground station, receive the data, and then process it. 
uh, only to see just a few small beacons, we were able to get data almost immediately after deployment as amateur radio operators around the world uh, were tracking GT1 and were able to receive telemetry themselves. So this was a huge help in being able to have other people kind of do the tracking for us and the, um, have much more uh, immediate and, and faster uh, knowledge of what is going on with the spacecraft. Um, so then another software we've looked into is GPredict. So this is kind of like SDK, where it uh, has orbit propagation and ground track displays. However, it has it's much more trimmed than SDK and it's much faster <laughs> uh, because, because SDK has many features that we are never going to need and, uh, has, and it's really great for what it is, but there's a lot of SDK that is just completely unnecessary to what are for our purposes for what we're doing. We just want a simple ground track, a, a sky map, and then maybe like an orbit visualization. And also GPredict is completely free, so uh, it's very open source, which is also what we are moving towards. So some recent progress that's been happening uh, in the last few months or so. So the package decoding has, uh, we, uh, if any of you were here for Jake Anderson's presentation a few weeks ago, he discussed how uh, he had worked on a decoder to translate the telemetry into uh, from raw data into the MATLAB package. So it's now taking place in Python instead. Uh, that was in a decoder that was created by the GT1 software team. And so this interface is easier with the actual ground station system since all, uh, the, a lot of the ground station software is already in Python. And so then also, like I mentioned before, the previous MATLAB app designer displays are being transferred into Grafana and OpenMCT, so we can have even more flexibility and just completely move on from MATLAB uh, and, to, and be able to show still everything that we want to show with even more uh, customizability. And then also, as I mentioned also, GT1 was deployed from the International Space Station so we have this cute, cool video on the bottom right uh, from the JAXA YouTube serve, uh, channel where it shows GT1 actually like leaving the ISS. We had a whole watch party in the Mission Operations Center. It was a very fun time. And so, as I mentioned, Grafana and Satnox has been very useful for us being able to see how uh, GT1 has been doing. And so we are hoping, we're still running into a few small technical issues with Argon Station, but we're hoping to get a, we, we have been able to track GT1 from our station, which is really cool, but we are hoping to get all of the connections finalized in the next few weeks so that we can actually uh, listen to the what the ground station is getting from the operation center and then be able to show that data in our new displays. So then some future potential steps that we might be interested in is, uh, so finalizing the ground station connections to make sure the, that that link is finally closed, that uh, the ground station can receive from the satellites and then send it directly to the displays as well as the mission operations center to be stored in whatever database is most convenient for us to use with our current scripts. And then also uh, eventually when satellites such as visors and lunar flashlight launch, we would be interested in applying the OpenMCT displays to those and, and tailoring them to those specific satellites. So now that we've, uh, we're doing it with GT1, it allows us a very good template to do it with any other satellites in the future. And then finally, we uh, are also interested in establishing a commanding interface that not only can we receive data from uh, different satellites, but we can also command from the mission operations as well. And so that's it. So, yep, any questions? Yes, Ava. Yep. Uh, I you this, like... G absolutely. I just forgot to mention it here, but yes, we are absolutely planning to do communications with GT2. That should be extremely simple given that it is kind of based on GT1, correct? Yep. Uh, so that once, now that we've done this entire process for GT1, it should be very easy to tailor everything we are already doing to GT2. So that is going to be as simple probably as just 
slightly modifying the displays and then just making sure it's GT2 data is connected to the server and we have the scripts accounting for both GT1 and GT2. So yes, that is absolutely something we intend to do. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you guys, I know that uh, this is Mm -hmm. um, I believe the plan is to have, uh, so with OpenMCT, we currently have a, um, I think all of the data or all of the different types of data are, we have a GitHub repository for um, all, of, all of those panels. So I believe the intent is to create a new, I don't know about repository, but a new set of uh, objects is, is the technical term, I believe, uh, in where each uh, object is like an element uh, or a display panel. I believe the plan is to have a completely new set of objects for every single satellite. So for GT2, for example, it's probably going to be almost an identical copy of the GT1 panels just with um, slight custom customizations. And uh, between those panels, we can probably, I, I believe we can import, uh, due to it being in JavaScript and having the ability for plugins, it makes it very easy to import whatever satellites we want to show and showcase whichever satellites we are interested in uh, or take them away uh, as long, because all of the data is stored in uh, JavaScript and JSON files. So. We are probably going to have a separate folder for each of the satellites with uh, their own custom displays that we can toggle on and off depending on what we are interested in looking at at the moment. Yep. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thank you. Thanks.